So this is a quick video, which is a summary, which is what most of my videos are because I don't really have the time or the patience to do a whole lot of editing and clips and stuff like that. But this is the Chicago Electric Harbor Freight Flux 125. It's the newer model from the 90 amp model that they had. Um, and there's just a couple of minor differences and I'll point them out as I go along. Um, everybody knows, well, if you're doing this, then you should know already. If not, you need to go back and look at some of the other videos. Um, you need a AC to DC rectifier. Some people use the 125, some use the 150. I got a 200 because there were, you know, 200 amps, 1,000 volts because, uh, you know, you either go big or go home because a couple of people burn up the 100 and the 100 ones and said go to the 150. I went to 200, so it was no, so I, you know, I'd have plenty of wiggle room. There is a 24 volt transformer that is in there that, uh, as you'll see from all the other videos you watch, that powers these two wires which go to this circuit board so that when you pull the trigger, the uh, motor does not bog down because it's pulling its power from the main transformer of the welder. So this is hooked up to the 110 um, on, the, on the switch on the front, and um, that's what happens. The, um, the other thing you want to try to get, if you can, and you can, either on eBay or Home Depot, but you got to order it, um, is flexible 8-gauge um, wire. Um, the very the stiff wire is just a pain to try to move around and loop around in there so um i got the flexible wire which is what i heard from another uh, person that did this um and i use these couplers which you get at lowe's or someplace else to uh with a crimper to uh hook stuff together um along with some um heat shrink um stuff to go over the the uh, connections um i used a heat sink from uh, an amplifier that i had um to uh absorb the heat from the um ac dc rectifier uh you can see the little bit of the um thermal paste in between the two and cut a hole behind here and it's held on and I figured that it'd give me plenty of heat heat sinking. Um, before I go around the other side up top, um, everybody said that this INE wire um, is heads and tails above the Hobart and Lincoln and all of that wire. Everybody seems to love it. So I got that off of Amazon. Um, and I made a toroid inductor from uh, the toroid core that was inside of that same amplifier. Um, that's with heavy uh, eight gauge wire, the stuff that doesn't bend real easy, but it's wrapped um, around that. I could never find any real way to calculate what the inductance was, um, but somebody did about half this many wraps and they wanted to be somewhere around two, an inductance of two, whatever that means, and they were like 1.4, so I just got as much as I could around that, and actually that's about 15 feet of wire wrapped around that, that core. Um, and let's see, I'll pause it here and move around. The other uh, side. Everybody says that um, you can do this modification for 30 bucks. Um, that's not really the case. You're probably going to be out 50, 60 bucks by the time you buy the capacitor, which is about 25, 30 bucks. Um, two of these resistors, they only came as a pair, only needed one. They were like nine bucks on Amazon. Um, 
uh, you can use the, the, I guess the whole process here is you first, the rectifier changes it from AC to DC. Then it runs through the capacitor, which basically keeps it at a constant um, voltage level or amperage. Um, again, I'm not an electrician, so I, I'm probably interchanging words. And then once it comes out of the capacitor, it goes through this induction coil, which smooths um, the flow of the current flow, um, and then back out to the to the wand. And that's what all of the various components are. And I also modified um, a clamp from a set of old jumper cables, which was a little, a lot more heavy duty. I put some copper in there and bent it so I can get a good grip and have a good ground on, uh, on, uh, for welding.